every two years, I write them a very simple letter. It's a page and a half. I don't believe in 200-page manuals because if you put out a 200-page manual, everybody's looking for uh, for loopholes, basically. But page and a half, very hard for them to <laughs> argue about what I'm talking about. So I tell them, uh, you know, that my reputation, Berkshire's reputation, is in their hands. And not only, and we've got all the money we need. We'd like to make more money, but we've got all the money we need. We don't have an, uh, an ounce of reputation beyond what we need, and we can't afford to lose it. So we never will trade reputation away for money. And and they're the ones that are the guardians of that, and that uh, I want them to not only do what's legal, obviously, but I want them to judge every action by how it would appear on the front page of their local paper written by a, a smart but semi-unfriendly reporter, you know, who really understood it, to be read by their family, their neighbors, their friends, and it has to pass that test as well. And I tell them I don't want anything around the lines. I tell them there's plenty of money to be made in the center of the court, and I'm 84 and my eyes aren't that good anymore. I can't quite see the lines that well. So just keep it in the center of the court, and if they have any questions, call me, you know. Even the occasional dust up at Berkshire there will be. Is, is big news. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll pick on Solomon only because it's history yeah, now. It's and a good one. A lot, a lot of time to reflect on that. Um, when you think about what you went through there, what advice do you have for a CEO who's on the media hot seat because of a similar situation? Well, there's, there's a couple pieces of advice on that. Uh, the first is that when you find out a bad, new, bad news, correct it, and if it's necessary to report it, then the authorities report it immediately. The big problem with Solomon was not what a fellow named Mosier did, which was to defy the U.S. government, not ever a very good idea, but that could have been handled. But he reported, it, it, he didn't report it. John Merriweather, his supervisor, uh, picked up on it in late April of 1991 and went to the president and the chairman and the chief legal counsel of, of Solomon and said, here's what this fellow Mosier's been doing. And they all agreed it was wrong. They all agreed it was reportable to the Federal Reserve promptly. And unfortunately, nobody did anything. And then in the middle of May, Mosier went out and did it again. And now you've got a terrible problem because you knew a, the guy was a bad actor uh, a few weeks earlier, and you hadn't reported it, and now that compounded there, and then you're in a, you're in a real pickle. So when you, when you find bad news, you know, my, I say get it right, get it fast, get it out, get it over. And get it right is important. There wasn't any question that Mosier had done it there, but the get it fast and get it out, they, they missed on. And so deal with bad, you're going to get bad news. I mean, I got 330,000 people. I mean, I, I will guarantee you that probably dozens of them are doing something wrong right now, and I just hope I find out about it early and the person below me finds out and lets me know if it's bad enough and that they stop it. So you can't have a city of 330,000 without an occasional <laughs> crime of some sort. Uh, so it's going to happen, and you've got to do something about it fast uh, when it does happen.